I'm uh, better known as Toma, T-O-M-A. And uh, I was a newsman with uh, ABC at uh, WFAA in Dallas on November the 22nd, 63, uh, when President Kennedy was shot. And I was on the scene uh, a few seconds after the shooting and to record uh, the events that uh, transpired uh, after the shots were fired. So when he got through with his speechifying in the big banquet hall there, uh, Jackie came in. Is that where he put on a cowboy hat or something? Uh, I don't recall. Were you there? I was there. Did you get any of this on tape? Uh, yeah, well, no. Any we shoot tape in those days. We shot film. Okay, I know other people... You mean the audio? Yes, the audio. No, we didn't have anything to do with audio at all. We were just there as uh, film newsmen. I see. But back then, you... Uh, you wrote the story. I see. But uh, he had his breakfast, and his last, I didn't know it was his last cup of coffee, but I filmed his last cup of coffee. And But uh, Jackie came in, and everybody stood up and applauded, and everybody, uh, 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 Lyndon Johnson, of course, was there, and uh, Governor Connolly was there, and they were very gracious, and the president was gracious, and he stood up and helped her in her seat. And uh, so she had her own private entrance, you see. After the president had his entrance, she wanted her entrance. I did that, so she came in. There was this thing to do all over again. But he finished, and then when he went out, the crowd was there. I'm sure it was a different bunch of people. But he again walked across the street, and uh, they had a little platform there that they had made, and he was going to uh, do his speechifying on the platform along with the local uh, politicos, uh, senators, and et cetera, et cetera, this type of thing, and governor. And, uh, and then when he got through making his speech again, he walked into the crowd. And, of course, this drives his security nuts, but nevertheless, the same thing happened after he was through and the uh, Secret Service or whoever herded him back toward the, uh, the limousine. Now, it was raining. This morning, it was raining. And the bubble was up on the limousine. And it was raining in Dallas before they left. They took the cover off. My camera had broken the night before. We were in the press club. After we covered the president, I was up in the uh, Fort Worth press club. We had a room there, because we were gonna come, you know, the next morning we were coming down, it was Friday, and uh, film the president. And I had set up the sound camera and I got his speech on sound. And then uh, after his uh, speech, well then I went up close to the podium and got some still shots. Oh, you did get him on sound. But I don't have the sound. But yeah. you did shoot him in sound. Oh, yes. They used Six, yeah. 16 millimeters. Yeah, but I never got it. So uh, my assistant was driving the news unit, and uh, as we were coming under the triple overpass, inbound from Fort Worth, we'd come in, uh, we're coming up Commerce, and then this Main Street, which is a good, good tobacco spit away, you know, and likewise to Elm Street. Well, here's the president coming. We just, we just accidentally timed it where... Uh, he was he was opposite the uh, school book depository as we were parked ready to, at the light ready to turn right at uh, Commerce Street and we could look over there and we could see the presence you know and I thought at the time well you know maybe I should jump out and uh, go over there and film a lesson but knowing that we had uh, uh, Mel Couch was assigned to cover the president from this platform and I thought well Mel's covered that all right I better get the film back and then the over there and saw this going on and uh, Curry voice on the uh, which you just didn't hear you know shots have been fired at the present these are not the exact words I want this to go on tape but as I recall this is what the information was that it came in that I heard on the chief Curry's voices on the uh, sh shots have been fired at the president uh, all units code 3 Parkland Hospital now, those might not be the exact words, but that's the essence of the thing. I had glanced at the motorcade. I did not see the, I did not see any shots. I did not see any of the activity other than the car speeding off. You didn't hear anything? No. At this time, did you jump out of the car and yes. begin your run? Yes, yes. Is this immediately when the, when the car sped off, you moved? Yes, right. Okay. Well, oh, I mean, I knew it was a story then. I mean, I knew that something had happened and there was trouble. I didn't know what, 
but I knew it involved the president, or and there was the president's motorcade. Where did you run? What direction did you run? I grabbed my assistant's camera, which is like mine, but it worked. I grabbed as much film as I could grab, and that was five rolls. Stuck them in my coat pocket and was running and shooting at the same time. Okay, you get out of the car. What's your immediate uh, route? What, what can you remember? I ran right straight uh, toward the... Uh, uh, school book depository. Why did Shooting you... Shooting on, on the way. Okay. Why did you run right straight toward the school book depository? Because I saw that's where, the, that's where the president was. I mean, that's where the motorcade was. And he said shots had been fired at the president, and there was but the president's say, car speeding down and all this activity. Did he say shots had been fired from the depository, or did no. he say shots fired at the president? No. He said shots had been fired at the president. Okay. Now you're running toward the depository. Can you describe to me that time of running toward the depository, airing the depository, and what was going on? a lot on of frantic that. action. People were running, some people were throwing themselves on the ground. Uh, one uh, one policeman tried to stop his bike and laid it down in the street, and stuff like this. I'm looking for red lights on cars, police cars, where they stopped. I'm looking for policemen apprehending somebody or trying to apprehend somebody. Clusters of uniforms because, or guns, or anything. To mark this is the spot, right? I didn't see any. You're filming this with what camera? Uh, Bell and Hal, uh, 16 millimeter Bell and Hal. Well, I went in with uh, with the first batch of policemen. I say policemen, that covers everybody. That covers treasury agents, secret service, FBI, uh, local law officers, uniformed law officers. Uh, I went in, we hit the door sort of at the same time. When I got to the school book depository, I was looking around for what's happening. Shots have been fired at the president, and I don't see any police doing anything. People were just sort of milling around. Like nothing happened. I said, I don't believe this. One civilian looked up at the building, and I thought, that sucker's inside, and I made a run for the door. And uh, when I hit the door, well, evidently some law officers uh, Decided they'd go in at the same time, and we I mean, all. I they saw it. you run to the door, and they decided no, possibly that's from your action. I don't know whether they saw me or were, were either aware of me. Is this too, not too long after the motorcade had advanced onto Parkland, gone into the triple underpass? I couldn't tell you in minutes how how long. You and couldn't say five or ten. You couldn't tell how long you were oh, milling around. No, in no, no, it's faster than that. You're talking about maybe three or four minutes. I'm or? talking about less than that. Okay, so from the time you saw the motorcade to the time you hit the door at the school book depository. When the Chief Curry made that announcement, I was in that news unit long enough to just reach over and grab a camera and five rolls of film and get out that door. And we're talking okay. about eight seconds at top. Well, not that. We're talking about probably five seconds. Yeah, you're probably talking and about... And I'm running and filming at the same time, and it was jerky because I was running. And uh, I got there, and I looked around, and uh, I suppose I stood there maybe... Uh, 15 seconds. Then I saw the fellow look up and then I ran to the door, thinking that the police were inside. The action was inside because I couldn't see anything outside. So I went in the door and when I went in, there were several bodies went in with me. Later I was to find out that they were law officers. And one turned around. As soon as I went in with him, turned around and says, lock the door, don't let anybody in, nobody out. Well, we go through the building floor by floor. And all these guys are, uh, the officers are looking uh, around boxes, thinking that the, uh, we went on up. The seventh floor. Didn't find a thing. No gunfight, no one. We started back down again. And on the sixth floor, uh, what was his name? You said, well, no, I've got it right here. Dean. Sergeant P.T. Dean. Uh, uh, he was a detective for the Dallas Police Department. Uh, saw the butt of uh, the rifle. Now let's get this straight. You are there when he sees the yes, butt of the yes, rifle. Yes, yes, yes. You were there. I even have pictures of him. I was on the same floor and just a few feet away from him when he saw it, when he, when he found the rifle. And he didn't touch it. He said, I think I found the rifle. Because you can tell it's a rifle, you can see the butt. About four inches of the butt was sticking out. Uh, okay, now this is not long after you run into the building then. Well, we had gone through <laughs> darn near seven floors of search and started back down again, so however long that takes, we're talking about at least probably three quarters of an hour. Oh, I see. So it's not minutes that the, in which the they gun is found. It's, no, no. It's a half hour or more. I would say, yeah. Okay. And uh, Dean started to retrieve it, and uh, he didn't touch it. And uh, Captain Fritz said, don't anybody touch it. 
called a lab. And somebody called a crime lab. And the crime lab man came, and I, I'm just guessing. It seemed like forever to me, because I wanted to see that rifle. And you sagged right there with it? Oh, yeah. Never moved. In fact, I... Sh I uh, this is interesting. They would not let me... The, the officers there would not let me get around where I could get a picture of the butt of the rifle. There's okay, what are your recollections upon going to Parkland? To tell you the truth, when you're under those conditions, a newsman, now at least this newsman, I'm more concerned with some idiot turning on a light right in the middle of the interview and screwing up my exposure. Uh, do I crank back a half a stop? Do I, you know, uh, or a full stop? What's the power of his light? Is he shooting 500 or 1300 or uh, 1,000 watts, what's the increase on this thing? And they kept doing it all the time, and I'm having to get uh, film this thing. And uh, my exposure, uh, there's so much about the camera operation that you're really not listening to what he's saying. You halfway listen, because this clues you whether to turn the camera on or turn the camera off. But uh, you're not there to say to yourself, well now, 23 years later, somebody's going to be asking information, and I'm going to have to remember this. You don't think of things like this. Right. But uh, I do recall that uh, there were some some kind of diagrams drawn. Now, whether it was uh, pertaining to the president's wound or whether it was Connolly's wound, and I'm sure these doctors weren't much of artists anyway, but uh, we got, as I remember, most of our reports that we uh, filmed, sound on, were concerning Connolly at that time because there wasn't too much you could do about the president. He was dead. And uh, I don't have any of this because, you see, this went on the air. If it went on the air, I didn't get it. It wasn't thrown on the floor. There was film knee-deep, knee-deep in the editing room where they would just tear it off the reels and look at it about every 10 feet and see if that's what they want because they, uh, they had to get it out over the air. The and world more than likely, it's destroyed or carried off. Oh, yeah, I, I have pictures of the little... Uh, black boy that came in with a huge drum uh, on wheels and he would take the film that was on the floor and put it in and take it out and burn it. My man. And uh, when I would come in to edit my film, uh, I'd have to go right back out, but I would always pause enough to uh, uh, see if any of my film was going out and being burned and because I at least wanted to save what I had shot of it because I figured that this was going to be a historical thing and I'd kind of like to have it for a keepsake. And I'd pick it up and look through it. If it looked like it was mine, well, I'd just put an empty reel up there and just crank it on there and uh, stick it in my pocket. And uh, uh, I'd pick up another one, and then if it was somebody else's, I'd drop it, and I'd pick, find something that was mine because I was shooting so much of the stuff then that uh, probably 50% of it was mine. It film was going through cameras like you wouldn't believe. Let's go from Parkland. Did, uh, did you see the president's body leave? Did you go to uh, no. Love Field to see it leave no. or the casket? No. Nothing. No, no. confrontation between no. Secret Service agents and the <clears throat> Dallas police? The last time I saw President Kennedy is when he got into the limousine in Fort Worth and pulled out of sight around the corner on his way to Air Force One. Okay. Where were you after Parkland? You go to Parkland? I was there for a long time. Discovery these, of, the, of a bullet. Uh, these reports kept coming in. Discovery of a bullet supposedly happened the next day, evidently, but uh, anything important that you can recollect now at Parkland, any wit eyewitnesses, anybody that saw the president's body, anybody that saw any, any uh, bullets, bullet fragments, uh, Jackie uh, splattered with blood and this type of thing. Nothing? I never saw Jackie again. You never saw Jackie. Uh, no. Rumor about the president uh, uh, Johnson suffering a heart attack. I w no, I didn't hear about it. And you said all this time Bob Walker's back at the newsroom. Okay, what's your next? Let's let's jump from there to your next vivid recollection that would have a bearing on possible evidence of of this case from Parkland. Where are we going to the next day? Are we going to? To, uh, I never I never heard of this bullet thing on the cot until probably a year later when somebody was revamping this thing. Or maybe it was uh, an article I'd stumbled across in Argosy or something like that. But uh, as far as I know, it was not common knowledge that anybody found a bullet on any cot, no time, nowhere. 
during what period of time? And there were a lot of newsmen there, and there were a lot of doctors there, and nobody even mentioned bullet in the cot that wasn't damaged or anything like that. That came up a year later. It came up almost a year later? Well, I say a year later. It could have been three years later, but I mean, I heard about it. Okay, not two or three days later, but uh, approximately a year when you were... When I heard about it. Now, I'm just saying from my standpoint, and I mixed and was with newsmen from all over the world. I mean, by that time, there were hundreds of people there. Okay, where do you go from Parkland? And you, they, we talked. You know, we shared information. You're, you leave Parkland, then what's your next recollection that has a bearing on, on the case at all? I know you're probably tired. Would you do go home or keep on working? Well, I made so many trips in and out of Parkland while uh, Governor Connolly was uh, being worked on. We wanted reports of the governor. And that was sort of my beat, because that really at that time, for the next uh, day or two, was the only uh, only thing that we had to go on connect, connected to the shooting was Connolly. Any trips to see Oswald at the police station? Were you in any of those news conferences? Or Oswald uh, disavowed any knowledge of shooting President Kennedy? During this, I never was at the police station. And now, I don't remember now uh, what happened after we, uh, after I left Parkland. Because really, the only time that I left Parkland that I recall, other than going home and coming back, we're going to have more uh, like Saturday. I was at the hospital, getting reports, you know, when they were given on Connolly. Sunday, I was at the hospital. Nellie, the governor's wife, was uh, making a statement to the press about her husband, the governor. And uh, she broke down and started crying and could not finish uh, her statement to the press. And so she, they took her off, and the doctor had come back do some talking, and uh, a newsman, I'd never seen him before, he must have been one of, was one of the national bureaus, was on a telephone in the back. Now, he, I think he must have been uh, a, new, a, uh, a print newsman because he didn't have any cameras or no assistance with cameras. Uh, he came running up to, in front of us, while the doctor was talking, and we were all filming saying, Oswald has been shot. Initial reaction. Ha! Huh. I mean, you start breaking down that equipment, and uh, I left my equipment standing. I got a wheel of Oswald down the hall. Well, he's evidently alive at that point, unless somebody's, well, somebody's holding his arm up, but he looks like he's, he's got his fist clenched. Uh, uh, he's, he's alive. And that's the last I saw of Oswald, was that short trip from... Okay, now, you say you can gain into some good stuff. Are you progressing to the Ruby trial, or are you... No, uh, there's some stuff that we aren't into yet before the Ruby trial. It's important to know that the film that we were using uh, was a black and white film of very high speed. It was uh, we, outdoors in the sunshine, or when you've got sunlight or bright light, we use it without a filter, or with a filter. Okay. We put a filter in. That takes three stops off of it and puts us down into the exposed. Otherwise, we'd be overexposed. This is to give us the latitude. So when we go in where it's dark, we take the filter out, and the film is fast enough that it will right. cover things shot indoors. Day and night with a filter. Okay. Right. So we can shoot indoors and outdoors by putting a filter in or taking it out. Okay. They dispatched when... Uh, there was one fellow, he was a retired naval officer, and he was one of our newsmen. And uh, Ron, something was his name. And he was complaining, and they tell me, that he wasn't, uh, they never sent him out, and all this world, uh, this historical thing was going on all around him, and they kept him in the newsroom. And I won't go into why, but you can probably see from what I'm going to tell you why they kept him in the newsroom, bless his heart. He was the only one around in the newsroom that they could send out. They said, we just got word that the suspect uh, is in the Texas theater at Oak Cliff. They dispatched him to go out there. He got there the same time the police did. 
he went in with the police when they were searching for Oswald. Now, by this time, they had a description of Oswald because Oswald did not come back after lunch. This is how they were on to Oswald. He did not return uh, like he usually does. So uh, they put out a description and where he lived and all this kind of stuff. And uh, so when he goes in, all this is taking place with Oswald. The fight, they, they turn the lights on in the theater, so he's got plenty of lights to shoot. And uh, so when, uh, when Officer uh, uh, McDonald M.N. McDonald. Uh, slides in beside Oswald. Uh, Oswald had this loose thing, jacket over his pants and shirt. And he had to reach inside, lift it and reach inside. As soon as he did that, McDonald grabbed his hand. And when he came out, why, well, that's when he had his hand on the pistol. The pistol was cocked and the hammer came down on his. He said, it's pointing right in my gut and that hammer came took the webbing, you know, caught in the webbing and didn't fire. This newsman was filming all this with his filter in. Didn't get a thing. And was still with buck fever when they drug him out into the daylight to load him in the car. He pulled his figure out, his filter out, completely reversed things. And it was completely blank. Overexposed to where you couldn't even see anything. Oh, Lord. Had history right there in his hands and reverse the process. Now I see why they kept him in the newsroom. <laughs>
the film again, Ron, and you narrate it this time because you were there. Uh, 